वेरी वार्म वेलकम आई एम आकाश राजपूत आई एम अकाउंटेड एज अ सीनियर सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर इन वेबकुल आई एम द होस्ट ऑफ दिस पॉडकास्ट एंड टूडेज पॉडकास्ट इज ऑल अबाउट हाईवा थीम एंड इट्स रिलेटेड फर्स्ट हाईवा इज अ थीम दैट हेल्प इन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ मेजेंटो स्टोर फ्रंट एंड टूडेज गेस्ट इज नन अदर दैन मिस्टर विनय कूप हु इज अपॉइंटेड एज अ टेक्निकल डायरेक्टर ऑफ हाईवा थीम एंड हैविंग अ वास्ट एक्सपीरियंस इन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ मेजेंटो एंड एंड एन एविड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर ऑफ द मेजेंटो एज वेल आई बिट वेरी वार्म वेलकम टू हिम Thank you. Okay. Before jumping into this session, uh, we we would like to know about Mr. Vinay Coop and his adventure and his direction in the Hayava theme as well. Um okay. Uh well, I started working with Magento too long ago. Um back before Magento 1 was released and kind of got stuck and continued working with it ever since and all kind of different roles and projects so i worked as a freelancer for a long time uh building sites completely on my own back with magento 1 uh i also joined adobe back then it wasn't adobe back then it was paypal actually and ebay as an employee for a while and worked there for 3 years as part of uh, magento u the which is would now be part of adobe um learning and uh Then I also started uh, I I chose to become a freelancer again um working mainly with merchants with their in-house teams and uh yeah um I also gave uh, many trainings for a long time so um just in-house trainings for developers and uh, yeah in my heart I'm I'm a developer so definitely a technical person not a marketing person or or you know solutions architect or anybody like that. I I really like developing code so that's my my prime motivation. Um regarding Hoover, well a couple of almost a year ago now Willem Wichmann, you know, he's the guy who actually invented Hoover and created it so all kudos uh, to him. Uh, I I'm just the second person who decided to join after he, uh, he graciously offered me a position in the company. Um yeah it's it's been great because at the time a year ago I was feeling somewhat frustrated with Magento because it seemed like it's more and more only suited for larger companies and it was incredibly complex building a front end store um both with PWA Studio and I guess we'll talk more about that a bit in a little while as well as a very outdated Luma front end stack for Magento it wasn't fun the results were less than stellar and um yeah so i i was not really in a good spot in regards to my my work with magento and i was basically looking around if i wanted to move on and maybe invest into a different platform and i evaluated different platforms none of them seemed like they really had a big advantage over magento to be honest so i didn't really feel like picking up any of those um So then came Willem, right? And he showed me what he created with Hoover and it was a real eye-opening experience for me. I was like, mind blown. Yeah. One person was able to really recreate the whole front end of Magento, keeping the things that are great about it and removing all the crap and doing that without the relying on marketing bingo and you know buzzwords and, or big teams or ma- it's really just the results speak for themselves he did it all by himself and um since then uh yeah since I've joined Hoover since then and, and really focused full time on it it's been amazing it's seeing the growth uh, all the sites that launch um the developers having fun with it I I feel very lucky to be in this position right now uh, working with with Willem and with that product that he created. Yeah yeah all that effort is currently now giving the fruits as well I can say that because lot and lot of organization are fuzzing about Hiva and the technology how to adapt that technology how to work on it and they try they want to hire the person who is just really good in adapting that particular technology so Hiva is growing with all the effort that you gave on the particular project as well so basic thing I want to know what is Hiva what Well, I am saying Hiva is Yuva, I believe. Yeah. So what what is Yuva, and 
what you were emphasize because if you are doing if we are doing some project suppose if you are uh, if you are doing on uh, checkout so we named it that resemble that we are working on checkout if you are working on theme that resemble that we are working on theme so what you were emphasize on a particular theme as well mm, yeah that's a good question so huva is focused on three things first of all it's a very lightweight fast base theme for Magento 2. So with lightweight, we mean um, regardless whether you look at it through uh, light, Google Lighthouse or uh, Core Web Metrics or whatever metrics you apply, out of the box, you reach the highest possible scores there. So it's very much optimized towards that. Secondly, so, so it's the fastest Magento theme out of the box. Secondly, it provides the best developer experience. Because both Willem and I are developers, so we focus a lot on making it pleasurable to work with it. Rather than having to build a lot of boilerplate code, um, we use technology like Alpine.js and Tailwind.js, uh, Tailwind CSS, sorry, yeah. which are um, very popular mainstream libraries, uh, especially popular around the Laravel ecosystem in PHP. And yeah, they've... We, we Willem took those, put them into Magento, and rebuilt the theme from scratch. So the developer experience uh, is great to allowing them to very quickly and efficiently produce results, much more quickly compared to something like uh, Luma, where it sometimes feels like the framework is working against me. Right? I have to jump through so many hoops and do so many things in order to reach my goals, and in the end, the result isn't as good. So with uh, Hoover, there's a much faster time to market and the developer is a lot more happy. So fast time to market, developer happiness, and um, best performance. That's Those are the, the claims of Hoover that they focus on. Yeah. Um, it definitely is nothing you would install and use unchanged. It needs a developer to customize it, to make it, you know, give it as a, a site's unique look and feel. But uh, it's, it's a great starting place to do so yeah so i can say that from that hard work that you are is above that benchmark that luma never achieved that thing so whoever watch this podcast maybe they don't, they don't have any idea they are working on magento but some developers are just working they don't having thought that why this thing is actually working like this and you thought that you develop hiva you are so basically what are the difference between the benchmarks of Luma and Yuva so that others may understand okay. that this is actually happening nowadays and Yuva is above the above that level that Luma never achieved till now. Right. Yeah, you're right. Yuva is what Luma should have been, basically. Right. And the difference is because, uh, well, okay, if we look at Luma, there... The, the JavaScript is one part of the site, right? It's very important. Yeah. Um, and with Luma, a tool called Require.js is used to load all the required JavaScript functionality onto the page. And Require.js can either load them uh, one by one. So on a Magento page without JavaScript bundling, it's quite common to have hundreds of JavaScript files being loaded. That's a huge amount of overhead especially if somebody visits the site visits the site on mobile you know and isn't use the late, using the latest iPhone and with great cell coverage it's super slow and that's you know back at the time when requirejs was developed i think that probably was around 2011 or 2012 you know that that was fine but nowadays it's a whole different story so instead of using requirejs um with with uh, with Uber. We we write almost all the JavaScript inline and only use a very lightweight small uh, library called AlpineJS. Um, AlpineJS is built around the idea of a modern browser, a current browser, because current browsers can do so many things that 10 years ago browsers weren't capable of doing. Form validation, for example, but also the API to interact with the DOM to, to update things according to user interactions. And in Magento, this is still done using things like jQuery, yeah. even though that's nowadays completely superfluous. It's just not needed anymore. 
So you get all this old legacy, you know, megabytes of JavaScript code in, in the website that isn't really needed. And um, Hoover just gets rid of all that and starts afresh. And that's how we achieve such uh, lightweight uh, websites. That's one part one of it. Um, with uh, Luma, it's also possible to bundle the JavaScript together. There are different approaches there. And still, the results are less than impressive just because of the sheer lines of code that get shipped with uh, JavaScript in Luma. It's, if, even if you use some kind of minification, it's still huge. It's uh, tenfold of what you would get with, uh, with Hoover or, or more. That's one part of it. The second part of the CSS. Um, Luma uses less and then the less gets compiled and it uses an approach that's somewhat semantic in naming styles. And the problem with semantic CSS is that it grows over time. So I might add a new feature on the site where, so I give it a new CSS uh, handle class and then I can target that in my less files or in my CSS. And each new thing that I add starts adding to my CSS file. So it grows and grows and grows the more I develop the site. Yeah. The CSS library that Hoover uses is Tailwind CSS, which is hugely popular, and it's a so-called utility CSS framework. There are a few of those around nowadays, but Tailwind is by far the most popular. And the difference there is instead of using semantic CSS, we use um, CSS classes that describe how something should look directly in the DOM classes. Like, give this a margin top uh, and a margin bottom and center it and, you know, we, we just style the things, but we do it directly uh, using CSS classes. And the benefit there is that then the result of all the classes that are actually used, we, we might, they just get used again and again and again, but in different combinations. But the resulting style sheet, once it's compiled down and all the unused classes are removed, it's so much smaller, it doesn't grow anymore because it's just more of the same classes being used in the site. So we end up with just a very small style sheet in general instead of, uh, again, megabytes of CSS with yeah. Luma. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can so see that. I, I sim simply compare the Luma blank theme and the web vitals as that. The page size is around 3 MB, but the same thing, the Luma blank is not that much content, it's empty, empty theme. But the same when I install the Hiva, Huva theme in my local and to check that the content is literally very less. So I can yes. say that the uh, it's a phenomenal thing that using in Hiva and the response time number of requests is even really less as compared to the, what we are getting from the Luma blank. Uh, so my basic simple query is that uh, when a normal uh, vendor or no normal developer or developer theme, so the content at home page and category page is a lot of content so due to which the size gradually increase. But as compared in Huva, the content is literally less, but the size is literally less and the response time is phenomenal. Like, but as soon as we can uh, say in the future a developer working on Huva and putting lot and lot of content, so there will be a gradually slight increase or there are a lot of increase in the timing or uh, TTFB white of web vitals in particular theme as well. Well, the, the idea, uh, of course, it depends on the developers, I guess. It's always possible to mess things up, right? <laughs> if, uh, even with Huva, it's possible to install a ton of tracking pixels and external libraries and, and other things and using um, toolkits that add JavaScript and CSS like uh, uh, UIKit or, or other, other tools. And all of these start adding to the site. So even a Huva site can very easily become slow and bloated. But out of the box, you start with a very crisp slight um, slate and if done right it stays that way right even with lots of content it doesn't mean that it has to grow and grow and grow yeah 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 so basically we are working we are learning about Huva and discussing the same in this session so but first thing I want to know if someone want to work on Huva what are the tech stack that a particular developer should possess to working on Huva and produce a desired result and a kind of thing that particularly some required so can you tell me the tech mm -hmm. stack so the the text the the text decks and the skill that a developer should possess is the question, yeah, or is it more about the um, not the the text deck skills of a developer and more about the the steps to get Huva? Yeah, 
don't both the things because it is required both those things. okay yeah. okay so from a developer experience perspective he's a developer is basically still working with magento uh so any magento experience is uh you know can be fully utilized we use all the PHP classes, the object manager, dependency injection, di.xml configuration, everything that a developer is familiar with is still there. Layout XML, we think layout XML is great. It's a wonderful tool, especially for extension developers. So all of that's right there. Um, no need to learn anything new. The difference is only in the PHTML files. And even there, a lot of what Magento developers are familiar with they can reuse it. So they basically only have to learn Alpine JS, get used to not using jQuery for everything, but rather using the native JavaScript library. But it's it's very accessible to existing Magento developers. Now to get Huva, a license is required because Huva is a commercial product. It costs 1000 euros, but we use the um, purchasing power parity index uh, or Big Mac index to give discounts to countries where, uh, you know, with less purchasing power for a given currency. And um, that applies not to implemented, but to the actual license holders. So if a merchant, for example, in India wanted to buy Huva, we would give a matching discount according to the current purchasing power parity uh, index. Um, the tricky thing there is you want to avoid European or US merchants, for example, purchasing a license for cheap that way, right? So we do check, okay, is that merchant really based in that country? But then we, we also really wanted to level the playing field there. So this license is required. We do have a 14 day money back guarantee um, in case, you know, because it's not possible to evaluate Huva without getting a license first. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's all that's required. And as an agency or extension developer uh, to evaluate Huva, it's also possible to purchase a license, which later on then gets moved uh, and transferred to a customer, to a merchant. Right? So that's possible too. And well, um, anything else? So the, the steps would be, okay, purchase a license and then you can start developing with Huva. We are in the process of opening up the documentation. We have lots and lots of documentation. So that will maybe also help evaluating the product without having access to Huva yet. And once purchased the license uh, for a merchant, that's a lifetime license. So it includes lifetime upgrades. It's not a subscription or anything. Okay. So basically if a, a person or developer who is familiar with Magento should also possess the knowledge of time stack as well. So work on the Huva thing. So uh, basically, uh, before Huva, Magento is, uh, Magento is ruling from past 15 years as well. So basically, what, uh, lot and lot of vendors are working on Magento. They are developing their plugins. Already plugins are in their uh, version control stuff. Now Huva is ruling and emerging technology. Everybody wants to make the compatibility and make their plugin feasible to work on higher Huva theme as well. So how much it is feasible for one vendor or developer to put their plugins already created plugin and make it feasible to Huva and easily implement it that Huva actually wants that plugin to be. And the basic thing is that because there are a lot and lot of plugins, some major plugins are one step checkouts that truly require uh, the required JS and com uh, components like that require that uh, required no knockout and the traditional JavaScript that Magento, re Magento recommended. So how it is possible for one vendor to pull that out? and make it compatible with Huva? Yeah, that's really a key question because the extension um, market and, and ecosystem is so important for Magento. Yeah. And that's why we really um, wanted to get a good story in place, how to do that. So since RequireJS and Knockout and jQuery and so on aren't available when using Huva, many extensions don't work out of the box. All the backend parts still work just the same. Everything in PHP, no problem. But everything inside of the browser might need to be updated. Same goes for the CSS, right? Um, so to do that, the approach that we uh, follow when we are making modules compatible or also you know, when other people, we, we, we try to encourage other people to follow this approach is through something called compatibility modules. 
Now, a compatibility module replaces the front end parts of a module that are built for Luma and replaces them with Hoover compatible parts. So basically, a number of PHTML files. The PHTML files for the front end of Magento in an extension need to be rewritten. And then if an extension is used in a site and the compatibility module also is installed, the extension is able to just work in Hoover 2. Now, of course, that's work. Um, but at the same time, making extensions compatible opens up the market for the extension vendors to, you know, to all the customers running Hoover. And it's also possible to, because Magento can run multiple store views and websites on one instance. So quite, it's quite common nowadays to see a site where they have um, some sites still running Luma based themes. And then the new store views are using Hoover based themes. So a compatibility module, if written correctly, will only affect the Hoover based store views. Okay. And the Luma based store views still can work unchanged. Uh, that's really important for, to give merchants a migration path there. And, um, I'm right now actually in the process of a recording video tutorials that we will publish on YouTube, how to write compatibility modules. But many extension vendors, uh, like Webcool, for example, already started supporting uh, Hoover for their most important extensions, at least, uh, out of the box. And of course, sometimes, especially during the early months of Hoover, agencies implementing a site didn't have compatibility modules that were provided by the extension vendors. So the implementers, the agencies, built them themselves. And that's why Hoover offers something called a uh, compatibility module tracker, which is basically just an issue list on GitHub, uh, GitLab, right? So there, each module that somebody wants to use has an issue. And then once that module is made compatible, it can get a label called published, compatible and that's how people can easily find compatible modules and see if somebody else already made them compatible and most compatibility modules then are published um, inside of the Hoover GitLab repository and also can be the compatibility modules can be installed through Composer with a Hoover license key. Uh, that doesn't mean that all the original modules are installable too, right? So a customer of an extension vendor still would need to buy the original extension, but then they could just easily install the compatibility module with Composer through their Hoover license key, for example. Okay. Right, so uh, it's easy to install for merchants if an extension has been made compatible once by the vendor or maybe by somebody else in the community, then that ex compatibility module is available for anyone who uses Hoover. Right? So the pool of extensions that just work with Hoover is growing every day, uh, which is great. Yeah, yeah it's, great. it's growing gradually, it's increasing. So basically, Hoover is new and is growing. It's uh, really fantastic. But there are other technologies like ReactFront.io, uh, PWA. It's, it's a kind of new new as well and is growing and is most popular as well, single page application. So uh, what make Hoover a silver bullet among those? Because it's a PWA is also popular, Hiva is also there, and Hiva is growing. So what makes Hiva different that it will overpower the remaining other technology and become on the top? Yeah, that's a, a great question. So PWA Studio in particular has been promoted by Magento for the last four years as the solution, the replacement for Luma. The problems there, why it hasn't found widespread adoption yet is for one, it wasn't ready. So despite their huge investment into development, uh, it, it was moving pretty slowly. And that's because of the additional complexity. Taking a tool like Magento that has been built with only server-side rendering in mind and making it a headless application, it's, it's not easy. So that's one thing, it just it's just not ready and it still isn't as hasn't got the feature coverage that Hoover has right now. So Hoover is in less time, more coverage compared to PWA Studio. Or uh, for that matter, there's also other uh, single page application storefronts like Vue Storefront and 
ScandiWeb, PWA, and others. Um, and all of them, well, share a number of downsides. For one, uh, if we look at the extension market, making an extension front-end compatible with one of these single-page applications is a lot more work compared to making it compatible with Hoover, right? So the extension market, in my opinion, every extension vendor should fully embrace Hoover because it just makes sense, right? They get a lot more return on their investment there. Yeah. Secondly, building the uh, PWA Studio or um, if you storefront side requires a team of JavaScript developers because it's a significant effort. In effect, every single storefront that is built for every merchant is like its own little application. Yes, they utilize all the components, you know, libraries that are included with it, but it's still like building its own application. And that, that's just a lot of work. So all this um, headless um, a single page application front ends were really major investments for the merchants. Building a storefront with Hoover is a lot cheaper. It's, it's just a third or less of the investment. Okay. The same goes for time to market. It takes much more, much larger time frame to build something like a view storefront, um, you know, store theme, whatever. But with Hoover, it's, it's, you know, um, just a lot quicker getting started. So it's cheaper. It's, uh, you can use the existing skill set. It's easier to integrate extensions. Um, you don't need new developers or the developers don't need to be retrained. And finally, for a long time, single page application were promoted as, you know, that's the new standard in web. Um, but that trend has stopped in the last one or two years because it turns out you know, all these promises of a beautiful new world didn't, that doesn't match the reality. So reality is, uh, is, is there and we can see that the amount of code required to write a JavaScript app that creates a website in the browser will always be larger compared to just sending the website to the browser directly, natively and then just enriching that a bit with JavaScript. So any single page application will never, it's just kind of like the physics of software and, and the network. It will never be as performant for on, on, you know, on a browser, especially on mobile compared to just a normal website. Normal websites wins, you know, 10 out of 10. Right. Uh, of course, it's possible to mess them up, but the potential for top scores are there only with a normal website. So in my opinion, investing heavily into single page applications for e-commerce sites is a bit of a sunk cost fallacy. You know, many people now have invested in that for years and they're afraid to pull out and, you know, say, okay, well, that, that just didn't really work out. There are places where a single page application does make sense, right? And this more app like situation, but that's not for every website and also not true for an e-commerce site in general. In general, that's not the case. You know, maybe specialized applications, uh, especially where, um, you know, you can benefit from things like offline access. Uh, there it makes sense. One example that I just recently saw, for example, was a uh, site that was used on their mobiles by uh, farmers on the fields where they didn't have a mobile coverage, right? They could still record all the data from their sensors that were, you know, the moisture and the nutrition in the soil where they were uh, with um, GPS location data and everything. And then later when they're back with, with mobile access, that gets synchronized to the server and recorded. There, stuff like that makes sense. But in general, offline access for e-commerce site, who cares? And that said, it's also possible to create a PWA studio, uh, sorry, not a studio, just a PWA with Hoover or Luma for that matter, right? Uh, the big di differentiator there is, do I want to use a single page application or not? So not using a single page application, but rather using a website is, uh, is the better choice. 
and you can make it a PWA or not, a progressive web app or not, so with offline access and push messages and caching and all that. No problem there, but it doesn't have to be a single page application. So that's why I believe uh, the future is uh, is our websites, not single page applications. If a technology yeah. that can be easily be harnessed and easily accessed, they're definitely on the top. That's why UI is it's a kind of super bullet, I can say that. So basically, I can... The numbers, speak, uh, the numbers just speak for themselves, right? We can see the numbers both in, regardless what Google Web metrics we look at, Google Web Vitals or others. Uh, also, the install base. After four years of heavy marketing, PWA Studio, it's, you know, the low hundreds. Yeah, yeah. And Hoover has almost reached that number of installs already within a year with a two-person team. You see the difference. It's It just doesn't, it doesn't add up trying to invest in single-page applications now with, with this business model. Um, we didn't know what would happen a couple of years ago. So when the choice was made, it probably was the best choice possible at the time. But with the benefit of hindsight now, it becomes obvious that it wasn't the right choice back then to choose uh, to go with a, the headless route with um, by default for Magento. So, yeah. Yeah, basically, I can say that I'm still a learner. Basically, I'm a Magento developer, but I'm still a learner. In starting days when I'm learning, I face a lot of issues while doing debugging stuff because uh, it's a stack of blocks if you look at the page you can you can find a lot of lock box collaborate uh, to become a page so magento provide a feature that helps debugging so i found that that's a, that was a silver bullet for me definitely i can say that so that's called templating that with the help of the templating i can locate which block is actually used and how to get that uh, how to get that block and how to, how, how to modify the code so i can say the same approach can be achieved in case of yuva so if I if I if I if I'm going to use a UI and want to uh, set a, a block because UI is already using our layout structure and block structure as well. So if I want to locate that block and want to do some amendments or uh, do want to uh, want to add some uh, some anything uh, code that I want to add, I want to display. So it's possible for a developer to uh, do use the templating that already Magento is providing. Yes, uh, definitely. A lot of the debugging. Um, you, you can work with with Hoover just like any other Magento site. The main difference is indeed only in the JavaScript and the CSS. So everything other beyond that, you can use just fine and debug everything just fine. Um, also, it's possible if you look at a website that's built on Hoover, you can look at the source code in the browser and actually see how things are built. That's one of the things that I really like about the web in general. With a single page application, for example, you just see minified JavaScript code. So I don't know. It's it's not as developer friendly. Let's put it this way. Yeah, I can say that because there are a lot of JavaScript can be minified and that surely going to increase the size of the particular page as well. So while loading on the particular page, a lot of requests will be there if you minify a lot and a lot of file and a lot of file can be on the particular page if you want to load that page. So. Yeah, if that helpful, uh, it's easy to uh, debug, then it's really a developer friendly UI as well. So, what I, uh, what next is all about uh, that UI, I'm saying, uh, uh, give me a second, I'm not pronouncing anything. I'm going through a documentation of UI where I found a thing that in default mode, basically, when you are you, you using UI, I, I got a line that say that uh, while in UI, the newly installed modules are not enabled automatically you have to do it manually and magento stores will not work properly in default mode but uh, uh, default mode is already working in luma as well because I'm, i i didn't get that notion of the particular line and the particular documentation um i don't know why it shouldn't work in default mode do you mean the deployment mode i've been magento deployed set uh, there's production developer and default is that what you are referring to by default mode uh, i beg your pardon sir uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I understand. Do you, are you referring to default mode yeah, as... Yeah, yeah, default mode, the same default, there are modes in Magento production, developer right. in default mode. So that, uh, mm. and document... Yeah, like, Hugo works fine in default mode. Yeah, so yeah, no so problem. in the default mode, I got a line that's saying that Magento store will not work uh, as usual, as properly in Hugo theme. So, and the newly installed modules will have to be, will not be automatically enabled. So. Uh, I don't get the deep explanation and the notion behind that particular context. So, what is the notion behind this context? 
Um, okay, so fair, I don't know, maybe there's something like that in the docs, but I'm not familiar with it because Hoover is just a regular Magento theme, so it works in default mode or in any other modes. And new modules that are installed in Magento, uh, by this, well, after installation, they're not enabled, but after running bin Magento setup upgrades, they will be enabled. So oh, I don't know. It's independent of the mode. So I, I don't know what that's referring to. Maybe I, I should look up on the docs and try to see if something there needs to be fixed because, okay. uh, yeah, that's, that's not true. Okay. Hmm. Uh, let them, uh, most important question. Uh, I am a developer plugins. So, I'm dealing with the collections, a lot and a lot of stuff. And sometimes that collection need to be displayed on the front end. So the most important I think that I like what Magento, they provide a UI component. It's basically literally slow, I can say that, but it's easy for a developer to display the data from table to the front end and in the help with the help of UI component. And it is really feasible. You don't have to do all this kind of creating tables and uh, doing a kind of pagination kind of stuff and writing all that code. You have you have to create the UI, uh, UI component XML files and provide the, uh, create the data provider and put the collection into the data provider and that will be displayed on the front end. So is that feasible for you to do the same thing not the uh, you, you, not like the UI component, but there there might be a certain thing that can be done easily if you want to display some kind of collections or data on the front end. Uh, right. Um, okay. So I mean, generally, of course. Uh, so I'm just trying to think about the best way to answer this. Um, so if I so this question in particular was about rendering some kind of grid with content, right? Like uh, from uh, a collection. Maybe, maybe like a Magento content. using, or there be there may be a new method that can be done in UI as well. Anything can be feasible is done. Mm -hmm. Great for the development okay. environment. Right. So we don't have a grid that can be used out of the box, for example, uh, with a collection. You would need to render something like a uh, normal list. You could use the pager toolbar okay. out of the box and reuse that for custom collections. Um, in general, uh, what we do in Huva is we load any data to be rendered. We try to access it through view models rather than through block classes. So if there already is a block class, in Magento or an extension that provides the data to be rendered, fine, we can just reuse that. But if I want to write any new code that gets uh, some data out of the database or from wherever and, you know, uh, provides that to the template to be rendered, I would usually write a view model for that. Okay. And this view model then just provides the data to the template so I can iterate over it and render it or whatever. One of the nice things about uh, using a tool like Alpine.js or Tailwind is that there are a lot of examples on the web that I could reuse. So if I wanted to build something really uh, grid heavy, uh, to be honest, I probably just would use the Tailwind grid CSS classes. Okay. But um, it would also be easily possible to, to find something uh, and just reuse that inside of Hoover because it's just Alpine JS and Tailwind CSS. So anything that's out there on the web could be used in Huva too. It's not a custom proprietary stack like it was with Luma. In most cases, it's pretty much a, a industry standard. So things can be reused in Huva. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. Does that make sense? Uh, you can continue again. Uh, what are you saying, sir? Does that make sense? Did, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that, that does make sense. If anything, that make it much simpler and cleaner, that is okay, and even mm -hmm. though much faster. Okay. So that that's re really good thing to having a viewer in the market. The important part, the important thing that I want to that you are talking about view models. So Huva most emphasize on view model part in PHTML template is that's amazing that really phenomenal stuff having a template it's easy to write code and HTML PHP definitely on the particular page but in a template in PHTML you were focused on view model rather than block and escaper class so basically Magento using a view model this is basically a, we can pass the view model as an argument in the, lay, in the layout files as well but here we emphasize on more on using view models and uh, more emphasize to use less layout uh, XML files as well. What is the notion behind all this kind, of, um, all this kind that uh, using view models? Mm -hmm. and what uh, what will, what will the effect on uh, particular development? Right. So 
view models were introduced in Magento, I think in Magento 2.2, maybe something like that. It's been around for many years now. And the idea was to decouple the custom business logic for the view from the rendering logic boilerplate that is provided by the block. Yes. How do I render a template? Should it be independent from how do I load the orders that I want to render or, you know, get the customer name? And the way it's done in a default native Luma store view, a view model is like you said, it's declared as an argument on the block in the layout XML. Yes. And then it can be accessed in the template and the methods can be called on that view model in PHP just like just like they would on a block. Now, in Hoover, um, we found that having to reusing view models always required a lot of boilerplate in the layout XML okay. to add an argument for the view model to this block and to this block and to this block. And there was a lot of repetition boilerplate. And that's not a good thing. It makes it harder to move things around on the, on a page, render them somewhere else or, yeah. So what, uh, the solution for this was to introduce a class called a view model registry, which is automatically available in any template that's being rendered in a Hoover theme. And then this registry can function as a factory for any view model. So the template requests a given view model from the view model registry, the variable dollar view model require, require and then the class. Yeah. Model. Yeah. And that will give you an instance of that view model and provide access to all the data provided by the view model in the template. So that way, the boilerplate in the layout XML is reduced. We don't discourage using layout XML in general. Only declaring view models in layout XML is not necessary. Okay. And the effect of this was that the templates become nice and encapsulated. It's easier to swap out templates because the template is responsible for what it requires anyway. This way, um, and I can use alternative implementations of things. I can, um, yeah, just move things around more easily and compose them together more easily rather than always having to edit more than one file. You know, Otherwise, I would have to edit the layout XML more and the template more. And now it's just the template that I can focus on. Okay, yeah, that's great. So uh, there is a feature in Magento that not even developer, even a person who is not a developer, who is not familiar, familiar with any kind of technology can access this and harness all the kind of feature that it provides. It's called page builder. Uh, page builder is a kind of uh, technology that create a drop down page and can be displayed on the front end as well. Um, and Luma and by Luma and any other theme that follows the traditional methodology of store from development can uh, show that particular static block on the front end. So is that possible in Huva to access that page page that's created by the page builder or any, uh, any person who is not a uh, technology familiar? Can that page be visible on the front store front as well? Yes, uh, page builder compatibility was built by John Hugh from FishEye and contributed to Hoover. Okay. So that's been around for a long time. Back when page builder was only available for Adobe Commerce, right? it was an enterprise feature only. Uh, that's when that uh, feature that was made available uh, as a compatibility module from John. And now that page builder has become available and you know, and included by default with Magento Open Source as well. We have also merged the compatibility module into the Huber theme. So yes, Page Builder works natively out of the box with um, with Huber. What's more, we also made it possible to use Tailwind CSS inside of the, you know, for example, an HTML content element or a block content element in in Page Builder in the admin. And it will automatically render the correct styles on the front end when it's rendered there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think page builder support is pretty awesome. Okay, that's great, that's fine. Uh, basically, I, I want to know basically uh, the two methodologies that already mentioned to develop, uh, do the development on Huva theme. There are two methodologies that uh, either you copy the content of, of the child, create a child theme or either you create your uh, default theme, Huva default theme from the scratch. What are these two notions are, are and how these two are different from each other and how they benefits a developer or how the developer decide which one is the best for the development? Right. Um, so if I, Hoover 
doesn't extend from, I have to go back a step first. So Hoover doesn't extend from Magento blank. Yeah, yeah. It has its own you reset thing called checks. Hoover reset. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, when I create a child theme, I only copy those files over that I want to change, right? And then the other files are built taken from the parent theme. And it's basically the theme fallback as we know it in Magento. Yeah. So that's the child theme. Now, the only downside of a child theme is this theme fallback that happens. You know, different locations have to be checked. More locations have to be checked until a given file is actually available and rendered. It's a small overhead, but it's still an overhead. So that's why it could also be an option to take the Hoover theme and copy it, just rename it as a copy, as a new custom theme, and start working in it directly. Because then there's one less fallback in, in the theme fallback. So that might be a little bit quicker. I would recommend as a, when, when starting out as a new developer, always start with a child theme approach okay. because it's still possible then to turn that once you're done into a direct child, you know, just by copying over the missing original files and then you basically have a copy so it can change the parent to Hoover reset of your theme. So start with a the child theme. And then if you really have to, if it's not quick enough, if you really optimize to the max, want to optimize to the max, then you can make it a base theme. Okay, that's a, that's a really good information for the person who really want the podcast and want to develop on Hiva theme as well. So basically, uh, there is something that, uh, uh, that makes Magento Luma a fast, that's called caching mechanism. That, that helps Luma and load files much faster. So how the ca same ca ca caching mecha mechanism that Magento provided in default Luma, will the same mechanism will work on the UI and there are some certain changes or amendments will be done that make it more faster. Uh, are you referring to uh, varnish or full page caching or? Yeah, they are varnish. There are, three, there are many uh, caching, the file system by database or by reverse proxy. So these are the mechanisms that Magento is using. Are these mechanisms are accessible in Hiva or there are Magento? Yeah, definitely. So uh, we recommend using Varnish as a reverse proxy uh, when deploying Hiva um, because it just makes it so much easier to scale Magento. Even though an uncached Hiva site without a full page cache is a lot. Well, let me switch off notifications again another hour there we go sorry about that uh so yeah an uncached site already is pretty fast but let alone for scalability it should always be deployed with a full page cache uh that's true for any magento site i think okay so yeah that that's definitely available okay so uh, uh there is something that i really really need to ask because while working on while i'm installing the ua on my local uh, dev environment so I found a bit information that that uh, that gives the instruction that you have to enable the traditional uh, capture that Magento has provided and disabled it and some modules that need to be disabled that dot mail dot mailer and uh, dot digital emails these are the modules that need to be disabled. So there are the significance of having that module in the Magento. So basically, if someone want to access that module in the particular UI, so how can he can do that? How one can do that to access that mo that modules? Right. So, okay, those are two questions. One is about recovery, one is about these dot digital modules that need to be disabled. Yeah, right? yeah. So those are list those are listed in the installations instructions as required steps. Yes. So, first, recaptures. Magento has support for different types of recaptures. There's the old recapture that Magento renders itself, and it's really bad user experience yeah. um but it, nobody i haven't seen a site using it in years uh hoover doesn't support it we just didn't implement it because it's bad it's a bad capture the capture just use nowadays problem almost everybody uses google recapture hoover has full support for google recapture version 3 the invisible recapture um there's a effort going on to also support recapture version 2 from a merchant who wants to use that instead. So that is supported, but it's just the default, ugly, old, yeah. self-rendered Magento recapture that has to be disabled. Because if that is enabled and configured, what happens is a Hoover page will be rendered and the customer will, or anybody will submit a form, but because the capture wasn't rendered, 
that form field is missing. So you, the server validation will always say, oh, the recapture is wrong. So no forms work anymore. That's why the default recapture has to be disabled. And regarding this dot digital email and dot digital chat, etc., modules that are bundled with Magento, those extensions were bundled for a long time with Magento, uh, their third party. And probably, I don't know why they were bundled. Probably a lot of money was paid by them to be bundled, uh, with, with Magento. But the merchants that we've worked with so far didn't need them. So they deactivated them anyway. So, we felt like it's not worth the effort making them compatible. Okay. That said, if there is a merchant who wants access to those modules, they would need a compatibility module just like any other module. And once that compatibility module exists, those extensions can be enabled again. It's just that at this time, there is no compatibility module due to a lack of demand. Yeah, all in all, Eva is above the mark. That's why this, it is a leading technology in the coming future so basically uh, it's not the end of the question there are a lot of questions as you're going deep into the development environment a lot and a lot of queries come a lot of query need to be solved but there is something that i need to ask in this session that you is lot effort for all the developers who work on this particular technology so what's your opinion about you are in the future as a, as a future or you is the future so these are the two things that i want to know Okay, so as soon as extension vendors um, pick up Hoover and support it as a front end, I believe Hoover is going to be the de facto default front end for any new Magento site. Okay. It just provides the best results, so it just makes sense, right? Uh, so yeah, so I think that's the you, future. You are the future, definitely. So that's all in my mind to be asked in the particular session. So. There is a lot. Thank you very much. This, go to the documentation. I will definitely going to share with you, uh, uh, to contact with you, definitely. I'll, I'll uh, post this links to this uh, recordings, tutorial recordings on how to develop compatibility modules soon too. Um, so yeah, that we might enjoy them. We'll see. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for the, for the session. Awesome. Thank you too. Have a great day. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.